You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. So last week's episode, I said for the first time ever, we're going to review the same movie twice. Well, we're going to repeat ourselves in a way. For the first time ever, second week in a row, I'm going to spoil how I feel right now. This is my first large bag of the year, bud. We're talking about I care a lot. Eric, how the hell are you doing? Fucking, I I had a feeling that you would say it, Jordan. I really did. And this movie is I care a lot. And I tell you right now, I didn't care at all. If you're going to give it a large bag, I would, Jordan, I would, I'm just about to give it a no bag. Really? You're actually no playing with me? Yeah, not playing with you. I thought this movie was hot garbage and trash. Wow, so I, yeah. I am wow. excited to to hear why you think this this merits something more than because it's either I love it or you hate it from what I see in these reviews here. Oh, uh, clearly, clearly, clearly. I, I wow. Okay, so you and I are totally different spectrums. I'm already saying this is a large bag. That's not going to change my opinion. And you're on the verge of getting this a no bag. Yeah. This, this wow. Movie was this movie was garbage? Listen. Um, I think. Showing off to the to the start because this movie is about a uh, as I'm reading a uh, legal guardian, a crooked woman um, who is really just playing the system, and it becomes the ward to a lot of these elderly people, into which then she just siphons all of their money uh, into her bank account and company. That's what we have here, and I felt that. The way this started, I hated her from the bat. I think that the actress did a good job, and the character is well written. If I hate this character, you must be doing something right. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so I cannot just agree with you at all. You start this movie hating her, and you end this movie hating her, and you want her comeuppance. Um, right off the bat, just so you know, my wife should not be a teacher. Uh, My wife should definitely write for television and movies because not just a few times, not just a handful of times, but like 98% of the time we watch something brand new and she predicts it and gets it right. And we'll share about what she predicted, but the beginning coming back to the end, she was like, that has to happen. I was like, no, they're just going to forget about it. But it happened the way it happened. Well, I predicted a few things in this movie as well, too. And none of it came true because the second part of this movie, the third act of this movie, just goes full off ridiculousness and says, right. I don't care. Uh, I don't right. care about what we did in the first two parts of this movie. We're right. going to rewrite everything and we're going to play it by my own rules now, which I think the director is is just like, if you're going to set rules and boundaries, then then follow them. Don't ignore them, which you did in the third act. I think a lot of this thing was ignored. Okay, so the reason why I'm giving this thing a large bag right off the bat, and this is this is me defending it. This is why I think this movie actually is what I considered one of our little gems so far. Is this was a movie, Eric, that you know, for for okay, for the people that are listening at home that don't know, I make the schedule. I pick the movies. I make the schedule. I present them to Eric. And I put this on the schedule because I saw the trailer once. And I'm like, oh, it's the chick from Gone Girl. It looks interesting. We have nothing to do that week. And Eric's going to put up a fuss. So I didn't even really want to watch this, to be honest with you. I came into this thing with the lowest of low of expectations. I was I came into this with a six-pack of beer thinking I was going to pass out within the first 30 minutes. Like, no interest at all in this movie. I was interested, hook, line, and sinker, about how nasty of a bitch she was and how disgusted Gina and I were over how this disgusting woman was because this probably actually happens. Not, oh, yeah. Not the move, but you know what I mean. But, but you know. The, the this, prey. Yeah. She, she yeah. plays herself off of being a lioness, that she is the predator and she is hunting prey, the prey being the geriatric world uh, who really are too old or – senile to know better right and she goes along with i don't know her confidence maybe her her work and just is the attitude like oh hurry up and get it done fast before they know what's happening absolutely because she's pretty much robbing them blind 
I can yeah. only imagine that this would be the black comedy part of the movie because this movie is, is labeled as, as black comedy, dark humor. I, I really don't see it in any other part of the movie besides this. Uh, and I don't know if people know what black comedy is anymore. I will actually agree with you on that one, dude. I mean, like I, I don't, I don't see this as black comedy. I don't know why people would, would, would say that this is black comedy. This movie is, it's, it's fucked up. Cause my wife and I, we're like, okay, so this is the movie, right? We have no idea what's going to happen. We have no idea the plot. We're like, oh, we're going to watch this depressing movie. And then immediately what changes me is when Peter Dinklage comes in. <laughs> I'm not a Peter Dinklage fan. Oh. I, 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 will, I am not a Peter Dinklage fan. I don't get the hype of Peter Dinklage. I just don't. But when I saw him come in, I'm like, okay, something's going to happen here because Peter Dinklage just doesn't do what – I mean, it's something's going to happen now, right? Yeah. Boom. Old Lady is his – a legend. We don't know if it's actually true or not, but Old Lady's his mom, and it's all like a mob plot. So now the movie's getting soap opera interesting, and since I had absolutely no expectations at all, now I'm fucking interested. Let's go for this ride. Let's see where this roller coaster takes me. And I enjoy the ride. Like, it's just crazy nonsense what goes on to here. And I just love, 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 love um, Marla, the, the main chick. I love her her hair, her glasses, her snootiness. Love it. She's just a horrible human being. Love her in this. She Listen, she does a very good job as playing the character, and the world around her does a very good job of it, too. Uh, to really paint the picture of just how, one, how evil this person is, knowingly so, that she needs to be in order to get what she wants. And what she wants is to be the big one in the room. She wants to be the richest, the most successful, the one that people fear and revere, right? Like, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what, that what she wants, and so it sets off that she is ruthless in that endeavor and doing whatever, what, whatever it is. I was into this movie i i really the way they set it up the way that they set it up exactly actually it was it was what brought me into this movie but everything okay. after that is is what was a downfall and not even because uh i yes i i did want to see her get her comeuppance i feel like it was setting up for that to get like this justice this piece of pie especially when she's messing with something that's above her the russian mafia right as right. as we see because um this movie is is that it's again builds it very uh very entertainingly so you know where she one of the victims that she gets one of the old people that she gets is well the wrong target she ends up being um this this person who should not have been fucked with that she's an untouchable uh, for this mafia, and I liked that that right. she she went too far this time, you know, and and she's gonna get uh, the hole's gonna bite back, you know, when she she reached her arm in thinking she was gonna grab gold, and instead she got she got rocks. So I was I was on for that, but again, just at the end of the second part of the movie when everything was supposedly to collapse, you know, or, or what uh, whatever her part of the story is it just got silly it got so dumb and like unbelievably silly in a movie that was already set up for serious yeah but 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 is that so different than a movie like a big chill or fargo where it just it gives you this interesting setup you're hooked and then all of a sudden at the end it just goes completely left field and then you got a person in a wood chipper i mean that's exactly what this is to me this is a fargo but I in, mean, in like, Fargo, things happened and people still asked questions. Don't you know, you there there was still – no. I, I oh. think that there was a lot of towards – towards the end where they were just like, yeah, that'll happen. And she's just walking around being able to, to tase people three times her size. And then when she tases them, they're out for the rest of the day. They're just done. And that that one already was, was silly to me, all right, when she's just starting to walk around like a superhero with a super taser. And she's got all this equipment. Um, cars are missing. Houses are blowing up. People are missing that she's involved with. There's no one asking any questions. None of the but, police are asking questions. She seems to be asking a lot of questions about them. 
You know, like when when the Russian mafia seems to do some sort of action, they have consequence legally. But when she gets involved in something, nothing happens with her. But see, that's the good thing, though, is that that's why I think it's kind of great about that is it. And yes, you're right. It's not Fargo. Fargo is a superior film. But. (sighs) okay, so I'll get my train of thought back. I'm not trying to to convince you otherwise. Why you're not you're not trying to convince me. Don't worry. I'm just trying to get my train of thought, buddy. You're you're good. I'm just trying to think what I'm saying. With 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 somebody like me, if you watch this through my eyes, expecting absolutely nothing and pretend and getting ready to fall asleep, and could, could be completely immersed by this, and then everything happens. Peter Dinklage happens. Russian mafia happens. She escapes. Uh, uh, what what they they uh, they uh, try to drown her. They they put her car in the, yeah. in the How lake. How the fuck did I'm, she escape that? Why not? Just this. Let it happen. We're watching. You sound like the director there, Jordan. Hey, why not though? This movie. Why not? Why not? I mean, this this movie. Why didn't she just take flight? You know, and and single handle. Why not? Because that's the good thing, though. See, that's why I think this movie's fun, though, buddy. And that's why I think this movie deserves large bag. Is because it's so far out there, and the concept is that you have something that's real world, where this guardianship is a real thing, right? So, uh, my wife, I looked it up, and we found this is like how it works sometimes. Like it's fucked up. But anywho, like you take a real world thing and then you're going to get the Russian mob and mob involved, which is even crazier that you get the Russian mob involved. And then like you fucked with the wrong person this time. So now it's all about a fun movie of how is she going to get her comeuppance, how much uh, t- test crash dummy bullshit is she going to be put through because of the bullshit that she did? That's what was entertaining to me. You know what I mean? I get like, you. It was like, okay, she's clearly going to come out of this, 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 this car into a lake, but how? You know, like, that's crazy. Now she's a lesbian? Oh, okay, whatever. Why? Doesn't matter. Because this movie's not asking me to ask why. This movie's asking me to just shut up and enjoy and eat the popcorn. Like, this movie was entertaining. I, again, this movie was entertaining until a certain point when it just stopped. When, though? Right around the, the the end of the second act. So when she is... When she survived her assassination attempt. Right. And that, right, just, right, that was just too Right far. around there, it was just... Everything from there... It's almost like she died in that in that lake. And that what we got to see was her dream. You know? Like what she right. thought was going to happen. But like, it was it was silly. The, the, the entire part of it is silly. Because it's now one woman taking down... Was, I'm assuming a, a quarter or a part of the Russian mafia, right. and and they're just cool with it. The same people who they alluded to that traffic human beings by the dozens, you know, like there are some suddenly like taking this one woman seriously. It, it just yeah. seems so ridiculous. This is not if this is a black comedy, then then check me out. I I, I felt that I knew what one was, mm-hmm. and this is just not it, man. I um. Very bad things. Do you remember that movie? Yes, I do remember very. I bad. think that is a great black comedy. Uh, Burn after reading. Mm. I, I think is is a is Brad a great Pitt. one. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Monty Python uh, did a lot of good job of doing black comedy. Right. Which which this is I mean, also isn't uh, didn't Coen Brothers also do Burn after reading? Yes, they did. That's Fargo. So I'm okay. So I'm Eric. You're right. I'm just. I guess for me. The reason why I'm just so excited, uh, and I feel like I'm repeating it, is just because I was not expecting to be entertained. I was expecting to be disappointed like, uh, what, um, Little Things with Denzel Washington and Jared Leto we reviewed earlier this year? Sure. I was expecting to be disappointed. Okay, here we go. Just a filler episode for the week. I'm being pretty honest with you so the fans understand. Sometimes, fans, this this becomes a job, and it's like, I don't really want to watch this, but we have to. Like, I was not interested. And I'm sitting here defending it, and I can't believe it because, like, I know, Eric, exactly what you're saying. Like, when she escapes the lake, like her assassination attempt, it gets crazy because somehow she goes to her apartment and they do, like, the carbon monoxide poisoning thing, you know, to kill her, to get to kill her lover, and it blows. And somehow the lover's not dead. It's like, really? Like, nothing bad's going to happen to this woman. And I think that, for me, was the entertaining part of what is actually going to happen 
to this woman to make her get her comeuppance because it's like, come on, her friend fucking survives carbon monoxide. Come on. Like it was just, it was fun. It was ridiculous. It was crazy. It was entertaining. This is a good sit on the couch and snuggle with your partner movie. That's exactly what this is. So I had done just that when I was watching it with Sarah, but we were interested until again, that, that certain point. And it did have our interest. This was this had something, and it was going somewhere. And I f- was interested to see what was going to happen because there came to a point where I didn't know what was going to happen. You make small sure. little guesses that you do in a movie, like you know we all do, and then sometimes you get it right, sometimes you aren't, and it steers you into a different direction and gives you more questions. And I and I enjoyed that part. It really did have a lot of depth in this movie. There were a lot of angles. And I appreciate it for that. But the characters had no fucking arc. I had no care for anyone in this movie. Uh, I you, continually... You didn't care about Jennifer? No. I continually really? hated more and more people in this movie. One such being was that fucking judge. Like, oh, he, judge? Yeah. he... Yeah, that judge most certainly would have been disbarred in, in any other movie or, or world. You know? Like... He is a piece of shit. And the other part of it is, um, he was written like like the Mr. Brown the Banker from uh, Letting Me Snicket's series of unfortunate events. Just <laughs> yeah, just an incompetent sure. buffoon kind of thing. Uh, the other one is, uh, um, oh, the, the, the lawyer guy that was supposed to represent the Russians. Okay, yeah. here's the thing is that uh, when the he silliness, was he was fun too. Um, I feel like they probably could have played a little bit more. He's supposed to be like this big baddie, but he just seemed to be kind of dumb. But again, right. maybe this was a part of the comedy where it was just supposed to be pissing Peter Dinklage off, pissing the mob off. And if that's the comedy that you saw in it, then I hope you enjoyed this movie. Um, it just wasn't that, that type of movie for, for me. It just, every part, um, when I started picking things apart, to be like, well, that wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen, that wouldn't happen. You know, it that's when it starts to get really unbelievable in a scenario that is very believable. Yeah, but is that okay, though? That's one of the things that I'm asking you. Is that okay? It just turned what you were saying. This is a scenario that's believable, right? So it's like, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, isn't it fun, though, just to turn off your brain and just sit here and go, okay, well, that judge would be disbarred by now. Fuck that guy. No, who cares, right? All this this, 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 this sleazy Gordon Gecko type of lawyer guy is supposed to come in and be a big bad and save the day and, and get the Russian mob, but he's literally a buffoon. Like, that's just funny to me. Like, it's it, it was just this movie is trying – I think this movie is smart where it's it's showing us logical situations in real life situations. It's showing us sorta caricatures of people. Sure. But it's just ridiculousness. And that's the fun part for me. It's just being ridiculous and let's see where this goes. I'm a- I, I hear you. I'm all for uh, playing or the exaggerated roles or the stereotypes of things. Or in a black comedy, making fun of something that is typically a taboo topic or something that you're not supposed to really talk about, right? That's right. kind of what a black comedy is. It's something that focuses a light on something that otherwise is a pretty morbid topic. It like, hence, yeah. hence the name. Yeah. So, um, but... I, again, where I think movies, other movies shine, and this movie fails for me is again just this the the unbelievability of, of things, where um, she almost does like a. St- Remember Steven Seagal? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Okay, you know how uh, in all those movies where he basically just could do a Kyoto chop to the neck and that person's passed out and Absolutely. knocked out. That's what this the second half of this movie was. Was her just basically doing a Steven Seagal and doing a Kyoto chop to the neck of people, or doing a, like, I'm going to break their necks, and she effortlessly just goes around and just that's that's all it is. But is, is that bad? I, I yeah, I, I for think, this movie is this bad? I think it is for for me. The reason why is because it confused me, the viewer. If I'm being honest about that, because you're setting a tone for this movie. And maybe it's my fault that I didn't do more research on this movie. 
that's honestly what it is. I went to this movie cold like I usually do. And thinking it was a black comedy, sure, I'm I'm all for it. I didn't pace myself myself into what was it, it was wanting to be, which I still don't know what this movie wanted it to be. I feel like I they're putting it into this category because they don't know where else to put it. <laughs> I don't think this movie knows what it wants to be. Uh, I, 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 I think this movie got put into a blender, and I think this movie was okay. This is what we have. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that she uh, got Peter Dinklage. What is she? Uh, what she? Uh, he was in the hospital. He was in the. He was in the care facility at the end. She, yeah. So um, she picks. It turns out the the target Diane Weist that she picks on ends up being a mob boss's mother. Right. right. Allegedly. Right. Right. Alle- right. Allegedly. We and, um, these mob people are so advanced and sophisticated in their crime that aside from the human trafficking and everything else that they're doing and the people, the connections, resources, and that they have, they were able to go in and legally take this person's identity, but they are also not able to legally take the mom out of the system, even though after they, they, you know what I mean? Like they're able to, right. to completely dupe documents, fake death certificates, or, or get rid of them, and do passports and everything else like that. But you can't get a person out of a out of a, a old person's home. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. We'll go off of that real quick. We have no idea how long that this has been going on because they said that this old woman, the mob and the mob boss, is now in the old folks' home. Took the identity of a little girl that died when she was not even one years old, right? Mm-hmm. So how long has this old woman, this mom, been going around as Jennifer? Decades? Two We're, years? One um, year? Yeah. I'm assuming it's a lengthy amount of time. Is, right. um, so time She's been going to the doctor for a while because the doctor said that she's been seeing her for a bit, right? And she's a cherry. And a cherry is... Right for the no, picking, baby. Yeah, right for the picking. No, no family. She's she's, you know, wealthy herself because there's no family. Blah 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 blah. Look, w- the reason why I asked you that question was because you were seeing that you were getting uh, irritated with the fact that you know, that 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 they can disguise all this, they can do all these things with Jennifer, but they can't go in and get her out legally. Well, let's say they've been doing this for the past 40 freaking years. Times have changed, judges have changed, paperwork has changed. Maybe this is a different world. I don't know because worst first of all, I want to know this one with you on this is what is I could keep getting her name wrong. Uh Marla, the main the, the main actress. Mm-hmm. Is what she doing? She what she's doing is morally wrong. But she is a she's an employee of the state, is she not? She is commissioned. She's just a, she's just a hired this, gun. Yes, okay. she she's on her own, but but she runs contracts with the state. So she is doing scams illegally within the system. Yeah, and again, her special, her unique super ability in this movie is to be able to go in front of the same judge that's assigned to her every single time and look at him and go, "Hey, come on!" and then he does it. Would it be better if they were like found like stooping in the in the broom closet? Like that would make it funny, right? Well, what those those two? Oh, the judge. Why not? Why not? Judge it, and Marla? Why not? I would have been happy with any explanation for why the hell the judge is doing what he's doing. I I would assumed originally that he was in on it. That would have been would have been uh, a black comedy for me, uh, actually, because I know okay, uh, people listening to it might be critiquing my judgment on black comedies. Fair enough. What I think that would have been funny about this for me is that if she exposes or when she was exposing how deep the Russian mafia was in on this, Mm -hmm. and then suddenly the second part of the movie, we get to see the Russian mafia suddenly underestimating her and seeing how deep she is. And she's got like the lawyers and she's got the, the judges and she's got all of them in on it. That would be funny for me. Like do that, that, that quick turnaround, that twist. You know that would be that would be smart. I actually like that idea, Eric. That's actually a really good idea. Or um, I thought that we were going to do a lot of callbacks too. I uh, going again going back to the human trafficking. I thought that uh, a lot of the mafia would have taken her or her partner in as as trafficking and in, in collateral. That probably would have been something. I guess that they would have done, especially if they made light or made mention to it earlier. And they also uh, made mention that there were three people that went missing out of that too. So right. what was the point of that? You know, you could have called that back into play some part, um, but they didn't. They completely j- 
just dismissed it like they did a lot of other details in this movie. Which 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 they did, which they did. I'm not going to disagree with you on that at all. But I guess for me, it was just um, lack for lack for a better way of saying it. It was just unexpected, and it was it was fun for me. But okay, so how did Peter Dinklage get into the what? What he did go? He went to a hospital. He went to a hospital. Yeah, that's right. Because after um, the mafia, which again Peter Dinklage is, is she drugged him. She the drugged head him. Head of yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, uh, they tried to do a session, uh, a assassination attempt onto her, making it look like a suicide. Excuse me, uh, where what they like they filled her lungs or, or they filled, put vodka in her system, I think, right, and then they um, kind of put her on behind the car, knocked her out, and kind of put threw the it bottle into, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of threw it into to the lake, thinking that it would just pull, work itself out. And they also beat her lover's her partner's head, bleeding from the head, and then left her to uh, uh, pretty much die from, from the gas in, right. uh, in in their apartment, too. Which, again, she gets up, and she's waking up just fine after being hit in the head, bludgeoned even, and breathing in all the carbon monoxide. She's just get up and, you know, like like a, <laughs> just like a nap. Oh, God, did I get hit in the head? All right, we better get out of here, huh? No need yeah. for a hospital. Don't worry about that. Oh, no, I'm fine. That gas didn't, you know, affect me whatsoever. I can I'll walk on my own two feet, even. You know, so that was kind of silly to me, and then the place blows up. Their retaliation, their their revenge, is this next part where she wears a wig, goes into, and finds uh, where they work. By the way, because she writes on the license plate of the driver, stakes out his place, um, then follows him uh, about a car length behind the entire way. By the way. Yeah, night and day because yeah. it was like early in the morning, and I would notice if somebody followed me from my house to work. But go ahead. Yeah, especially in the morning, that early in the morning when no one's on the road, and it's like, hmm, there's this car has been behind me for about an hour now. Yeah, what the hell? Yeah. But anyway, so she follows him to the parking garage where Peter Dinklage works, and there, with a clever wig that she wears, nobody will figure me out. Um, she's able to get into the front building where doors literally open for her. And she's yeah. able to go in, and um, we don't know how. During this time, by the way, too, she was able to acquire a stun gun, a taser, and a needle, uh, a syringe of sort, where she's able to, within it, able to knock somebody out. So she has some sort of uh, chemical or serum in there that, you know, some sort of chloroform that's able to knock somebody out. Uh, somebody who's of Peter Dinklage's size, size which too. would probably kill him. Yeah. So she comes in all equipped, and she goes down to the garage. She magically hits Taser number one. Mm-hmm. He's out for I'm right. assuming twenty minutes. By the way, too, because she has to sit in the car while he pulls up, or while while he walks out of the elevator. The bodyguard's still down. By the way, after that vicious tase from the neck, surely he'll never be up. So, I, again, that was just part silly. He gets in the car, and as he gets into the car, she then takes the, the syringe, pops him in the leg with it. He's out immediately, so that thing didn't take too long to kick in. And then the other bodyguard is just like, Duh, hey, what are you doing? And she hits him with a stun gun, jackass style, right. and, and and he's he's done for five days. Like... So, and then she gets in the car and, and takes off. And then she, and she strips Peter Dinklage na- naked and puts him in the middle of the woods. And then they inject him with more Which I don't know why they would stuff, do that. I guess. Um, so, yeah. To which then, later on, a runner comes up. Um, oh, the, oh, the reason why they did that is because they wanted him to be found naked and have no identity whatsoever, right? Mm-hmm. So when they find him... Um, that he's way he's, John he's Doe. labeled as a John Doe, and then right. she was able then to then take over guardianship of this John Doe, um, which is again completely fucking silly to me. Um, I feel well, that's like funny I, though. Yeah, that's funny. It's it's ridiculous. Like yeah, uh, that's okay. Yeah, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying it isn't okay. I'm I'm just saying we're at a point right now where. What I don't know what you're what this movie is doing. 
I don't know either. Again, I'm on this roller coaster. I'm it, enjoying it, this ride. This is it crazy. Just, it just feels like this movie was not the same one that I started with. It feels like the, the, the yeah. start of the movie had a little bit more of a robust story and a little bit more of a direction. But right. this latter part of it, it just seemed like uh, our director, writer, director here, who, Jay Blakeson, is that his yeah. name? Uh, it, it just seemed like he was just, he just woke up one day, which is like, oh, shit, I got to finish this movie in an hour. And yes, no, I, I 100% agree with you. <laughs> yeah. No, nothing you're saying I disagree with you on. Yeah. I just, I just, I just see it differently because. I get it. Uh, for me, I I like it when movies completely take me left, and then all of a sudden we're going right now, and it just gives me this whiplash, and I'm just excited, and it's like, where is this fucking going? Like the last time I remember feeling the way I'm feeling now is the ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when we reviewed that movie. Like I was not expecting that ending, you know. So it's just something that I kind of enjoyed uh sometimes in, in, in certain movies and then she just wants 10 million dollars that's the whole thing give me 10 million dollars 10 million dollars i'm assuming she thinks because the diamonds that she found with jennifer's safe deposit boxes were 10 million dollars i don't know why she wants 10 million dollars they never say why she, i mean like she gave her explanations that she feels that that would be enough money to give her her start into the in into the into the world that she wants to her be in. start her start. Some people would die happy. Okay. She wants uh she wants to get to a point where she has fuck you money. I think that's basically what she's trying to that's say right. and that right. ten million she feels would be a good start to for her to enter in that, that new level. But she gets her come up and so because uh she she gets her ten million dollars, Jennifer's released the mom. Peter Dinklage is released. Everybody's happy. She's now a CEO of this major corporation. She's on the news. Oh, but... oh because after they made a deal, after, when Peter Dinklage was in the yeah. hospital, uh, he was just like, all right, you know what? Bygones be bygones. We should work together instead of working against each other. And we should take your small town business of, you know, whatever the hell, and just taking old people's money. So we should make that national. So right. why not? Sure, I, I, why, why not? At this point, Jordan, I'm just like I'm with you. Like, yeah, why not? Of course, this would happen. You know, why? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, why not? Again, I mean, you press play not knowing what what you're getting. Yeah, and, no, no, and, I, and you I made it through. So why you not? You got it, you, and you got it. I definitely didn't know what I was getting. Um, and then, and then again, it builds into this world where she's now this new CEO and they ask her inappropriate questions on TV, like how much money do you make? It's uh, silly to me and all that part. And then it ends in such a fart in the wind of a callback. That's the only callback that they actually do in this movie. Right. Which Gina called out and I'm happy she did, but I'm pissed. So the callback is the beginning of the movie, the opening credits, slow-mo, this guy is trying to break into the nursing home because he is upset with the – with well, I'm sorry, Marla. So there's Marla. His mom uh, was a target. His mom was a target. He knows something's fucked up. He's trying to get his mom, but she won't let him. And he spits on her and says, fuck you, bitch. And he says, I believe in the beginning, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, she comes out of the newsroom, she's in the parking lot, she's with her lover, you know, and she's all these things. Walking on and, sunshine. Oh yeah. And her comeuppance is she gets shot in the chest shoulder area. I don't know how she would die, but she got. No, that I mean, was a heart shot. She got shot in like the, right oh, underneath the, the boob, heart? dude. Yeah. Did she? Okay. 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 So she got a boob shot. All right. It's fine. So she got shot in the boob and she dies in her lover's arms. Now, why? I have said this whole time that this movie is a large bag because I just could not believe the nonsense that this was. I will call bullshit on this. So I was expecting like a happy death day kind of ending for her where it's like her being shot from a callback is not justified. This movie started out with a serious subject that probably is going on in real life to Peter Dinklage, to the Russian mob, to surviving assassination attempts, stun guns, and getting ten million dollars, <laughs> and the movie's gonna end with her getting shot in the boob. No, yep. the boob. No, the movie ends with her 
getting ran over by a car multiple times in a comedic fashion, uh, getting her head chopped off on a roller coaster when it goes awry, uh, something ridiculous, something crazy. Sure. Because that's what the movie needed to end with, not with her getting shot in the boob. A boob shot's not ridiculous, and that was the only disappointing part for me. It's like, really? That's how? Well, the other part is because, and I think to the regular viewer, like myself, the entire time you're wanting, you're wanting so bad for this woman to get it. And right. not just, and, and a gunshot is too easy of a death easy. for her. You know? Very, yeah. And you wanted a lot more. This is an evil person. They built up this entire movie to be so. And so you want that, that equal and opposite reaction. Right. Towards her. And you don't ever get it, but I and I understand that the message of the movie might be that the bad the bad guy wins sometimes, you know. Sure. Um, which in her case, she did. She she really did persevere and win in this movie. Unfortunately, she was careless and kind of forgot about the little guy, you know, underestimated right. him, and she got shot at the end. Uh, but yeah, you, you wanted that that grander kind of right. kind of finish you know yep. the ta-da with the, you know yeah. coming out the cake with the jazz hands absolutely eric fucking fucking plane goes down and she's trying to survive a plane crash life you know last survivor and then she gets ate by a shark i mean why not like let's just go with it you're 100 percent right i just that was the only thing i was like really and i was disappointed because we don't know if she actually died but she probably boob shot she's dead right so mm-hmm so that was disappointing for me. So I've already said that this movie is a large bag. I'm not going to ramble on for our popcorn rating on, on why I feel this movie is ridiculous. It's it just to sum it up for the fans who listen to this episode all the way through. If you want, in my opinion, a stupid, fun, turn your brain off, cuddle on the couch kind of movie, this is it. Like I was not expecting this. <laughs> Uh, movie guys has reviewed some shit. I have not given a large bag to a single movie at all this year. Eric's first one was Malcolm and Marie. I give that one a medium. I mean, like it's just certain movies hit me at certain times. This movie did. It was ridiculous. It was funny. It was outlandish. Uh, couldn't believe the stuff that people were doing. People were saying people getting away with, um, just completely not expecting it. Now, what I am going to do is a few months from now, I'm going to go back and try to rewatch this and see if I have the same reaction. Because, again, to end my rant, I was going into this expecting to fall asleep. And I was surprised that the movie entertained me enough to keep me awake. So, therefore, I think that there's something to it. So, that's why I think that this one's a large bag. Besides the ending, it sucked. A large bag for me. Eric, are you still getting this one a no bag? I uh, was going into this movie with little to no expectation, but with interest. The people involved in it are people that I like. Uh, I, I like all their projects. They're good actors. They're good performers. They uh, do what they can do, and they do it very well. This movie came in with a Golden Globe nomination and a win uh, for the person who played Maria or Marla. I'm sorry. Um, she won for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Musical in this one, too. So already mm. they're setting a bar into this as well. Um, I It was on Netflix, and the trailer looked compelling enough, and I was like, okay. I had no I had no reason to disagree with Jordan when he picked this movie to, to go on our list. Um, again, watching it, and as it's starting, I'm into this movie. I'm not saying that there was any part of the movie where I – was falling asleep where I was yawning or any part of it from the entire runtime of all two hours of this movie, which might've been a little bit long if I could I say agree. that. I agree. Um, but I, I was watching. So don't think that I, I was ever fell out of interest in this movie. There just came to a, a point, And again, I'm repeating myself uh, where this movie stopped being originally what it was if it knew what it wanted to be. The other movies, like the other black comedies that I like enjoy and that I've talked about before, 
um, they had rules that were set up. There were wor world rules where there were uh, things that happened. There were consequences. What type of consequences would they be depends on the type of movie. If the consequence itself was something where it got to be uh, kind of over ridiculous, kind of like a very bad things where any right. action that they had done just kind of got worse and worse and worse. Or the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret is a good series um, with uh, um, David Cross. Another kind of black comedy where anything that is done by a character or characters, there is a consequence for it, a cause and effect. This movie stopped having that. At the, at the end of Act 2 and the start of Act 3, it just was just like, fuck it. I don't care anymore. We can just have things just appear out of air. It doesn't even matter anymore. <laughs> don't 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 even ask questions. It's just going to happen this way now, and I didn't like that. It it really took me out of of the movie and any part that was going to happen. There was no arc to any of these characters. There was at once a story, but I think when the Russians actually started to go into uh, when they went into the old person's home at the first time. And right. the guards at the whole people home had live ammunition, and they were shooting rounds at them. <laughs> that was a bit. That was fucking silly. That was funny. Um, yeah, that, that was like really silly the way they think about it. But I mean, again, even those two guards, they get um, really just just kind of taken out by the littlest things, by the Steven Seagal Kyoto chop. You know, oh, right. like they get, one guy gets shot in the leg, and suddenly he's out. You know, committed just he commits so many crimes. He's shot in the leg. He's just gonna sit there now. Um, the other guy got hit in the chest by an O2 tank because they got, you know, uh, hit by some crossfire or something like that. And suddenly he's out for the rest of the. It, it's just the way that consequences just seem to selectively happen when the director needs it to in order for the for the plot to move. I thought it was was very sloppy. I did okay. not like it. And I agree with you on that one. Okay. Yeah, and for that, I will not give it a a, a no bag. I, I I will say that maybe just out of the sake of the genre of a black comedy, that maybe I missed the mark on this one. But I have to acknowledge that the characters in this were believable. I liked uh, Diane Weist and her character. She did a very good job. Um, mm -hmm. I liked uh, uh, Rosemond. Who? Uh, what's her name? Wait, let me click on it here. Marla? Yeah, Roseman Pike, who played Marla. She oh. did a very good job. And good. I think that that award is actually warranted. I, I really do. She's, she did a very convincing job on this. Um, someone just like a Joffrey, I know you don't watch Game of Thrones, but again, when a character uh, makes me feel that emotion, she's doing. they are doing a good job. And she did a very good job. I did not like her, her friend Fran, because she basically was just... Uh, uh, just a damsel. She didn't really do much of uh, fucking anything in this movie, right? Um, yeah, she was just a she was just a lover. She did nothing. Yeah, and she got away with about everything too, right? Uh, um, the the judge really pissed me off because he was just an incompetent ass that really should have gotten it worse than Marla, if anything. Um, but and again, um, I feel like he was just written as Deus Ex Machina, just to have the the plot move along whenever it needed to, real quick. And he was just kind of there to, to save her and, you know, wherever the hell and, and move the shit along. Um, I was on board this movie for Act 1 and 2. Act 3 just was was really a dud. It really was a dud. I gave it a small bag. I'm not going to watch this movie again, nor would I recommend it to anybody. Wow. See, this is, you know, you and I typically are somewhat on the same spectrum together. I mean, sometimes we're a little off here and there. But most of the time, you and I for the most part, agree. Uh, this is the first time in a long time where I think you and I just think completely different. And why I think that is, is exactly what I said a second ago. I'm going to give this movie another try a few months ago to see if my feelings are the same or if they change. Because maybe I'm just giving it a large because I was happy that I stayed awake. I don't know. <laughs> I stayed awake. I, I don't sure. know. But I, here, I don't know. Here's the thing is that I have also have a history of really not uh, being very hit or miss on black comedies. I, I feel that a lot of them, there's a certain type of humor that you're going for. And I, I understand that intellectually you can tell this story and, and kind of have a chuckle about how ridiculous the, some of these things are. 
um, uh, some of the situations. And I understand that. Again, I go back to very bad things just because that was one as a very good example, you know, where a boy's going to a bachelor party and the bachelor party increasingly gets worse and worse. And death is involved in this one, too. Right. This one, people escape death. And there, there really doesn't seem to be any genuine consequence. And therefore, if there's not, I can't laugh at anything because people are just defying any, everything like like they're some sort of superhero. It's, Laws of physics. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's just it's unbelievable because I, I'm not relating to that anymore, you know, whereas right. on other movies I, I can it, like in Burn After Reading, is, I, I'll bring that one up again. For example, when Brad Pitt breaks into the house, you know, and someone Tilda Swinton, I think, right, is actually afraid that someone's in her house and it ends up just being the, the dupus of, of Brad Pitt. You know, remember, remember when he gets shot in the closet? Like, that's I couldn't believe that. That's hilarious. That part was hilarious because that was an accident, and it was an accident that had consequences. And, right. and they made that funny because of how unfortunate it was that led up to that moment. You know, right. this didn't have the, those moments. It, it was no. just kind of. It was just different. And um, again, I'd be open to say that I'm um, maybe. Uh, what's an, uh, maybe some other. Um, uh, what's the suburban the George Clooney one? Suburban, suburb, suburbicon, suburbicon. Like that's another one Matt that, Damon. that Matt talks Damon. about race relations and stuff like that too. Where and, and I get that's a very taboo subject where everyone thinks in that movie that the new neighbors, the new the new African American people that move into the white neighborhood, that they're gonna stir trouble. But the actual fucked up people are the white people, and like that's a good that's a good kind of juxtaposition there. That's a good. A way to point that in the problems that he was having, I get that. But I'll bring up another one like Hail Caesar, where it's mm. like that's the, that was just dumb because there was nothing that happened in that movie. There was no consequence. It was just one skit or skit sketch after another that didn't have to do with anything else in the movie. It was just kind of mm. like there, you know. Right, which actually we reviewed Hill Caesar. It's like our fourth episode ever. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I, I shed on that one too. You did, you did. You were excited. I remember that it was six years ago. But like, hey, look, we can go on and on forever. This one, uh, fans who listen to this episode clearly know that we had a great time talking about this one. Uh, the, 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 this one is a fun conversation to have. I can't wait for you guys uh, to actually listen to this all the way through. This was fun. Uh, but like always, before we close out the show, everybody, thank you for checking us out on, on movie guys podcast at podbean.com. Check us out wherever you get your podcast from, and also make sure to check us out on social media, mostly our Twitter at movie guys pod. You can talk to us, message us, um, and everything else. So thank you so much, everybody for listening. And Eric and I will be back next week for another awesome episode. Have a good night.